Welcome back to Hackers at Help. Uh, we are in our getting started with Firewall series. So, if you remember, we we left off in the last video, troubleshooting some incident after allowing uh, traffic from the internal LAN to the DMZ in order to access the uh, IIS server. We were troubleshooting connectivity between uh, the Windows server and or any machine that we have in the LAN and the other DMZ. So in order to get started, let's see if this thing works. We're going to start by creating a trace route to the IP of the server, which is 192.168.0.2. Okay. almost forgot that we are in Windows. Perfect. Okay. So we see over here that we reach the firewall and the packet gets lost in the firewall. So let's go to the firewall. Let's double check the rules. We go to firewall rules. Remember that the rules are top to bottom. That means that the older uh, packets are going to start trying to match the rules starting from the ones that are in the top. And then it's going to follow up with any rules that are in the bottom. And at the end, if there's no rule that matched that packet, it's going to be a, a implicit drop all. So if there's no rule, it's going to drop the traffic, right? So we see that the LAN allows for access uh, right now in the port ATM443 from source any to the da, da, da. Okay, this is the anti-lockout rule that uh, we explained in the first video that that will allow us to not block ourselves out of the firewall in case we do too many uh, attempts uh, with the wrong password for the login. The second rule that we have over here is uh, allowing traffic that comes from the LAN net that goes to any port. So default allow LAN to any rule. Okay, so that should be okay. And then we are trying to access the DMZ. So we generated this uh, PV4 rule, which allows traffic to the destination 192.168.0.2 everywhere. Uh, please allow any to connect to the IIS server. I thought we set up the connection only to act on port 80, but anyway. So, we just did a trace route from here and we are able to reach the router. So the next step will be to go to the server itself and follow the same procedure. Yeah, cool. Let's go and ping what will be the gateway, which is 192.168.0.1. Doesn't matter the amount of zeros, it will uh, simplify to one. Okay, and we can then reach uh, the router. Okay. So. In order to fix that, we are going to try, sorry, apologies for jumping back and forth. And uh -huh. we are going to try adding a rule to the DMZ beneath. It's going to be a pass, interface DMZ, address family IPv4, protocol TCP, nope. We're going to do ICMP, any ICMP packet, uh source any source destination any destination so the uh, remember the only rule the only purpose of this rule is going to help us troubleshoot so 
we're going to set in the description troubleshoot temporal rule again the description are not necessary they are just going to make our life way easier in order to understand what's going on with that okay perfect so now that being applied we are going to jump back to the other server we are going to open the command prompt and repeat the same process try to ping okay this the uh firewall interestingly enough the firewall is not responding so that's not good okay let's go ahead go back to the firewall we know that all changes have been applied successfully and we have the correct rules in the dmz as well as in the lan so at this point i will go and check the interfaces the lan seems to be okay so let's focus on the dmz uh description dmz ta -ta, ip ip4 static ip4 that's correct ta -ta -ta -ta. Okay, IP4. Oh, okay, there we can see an issue. As you can see, this is supposed to be a slash 24, as this is the PF sensor or the firewall is supposed to be the uh, gateway or the endpoint for this network. And this network is slash 24. And therefore, if we configure the interface as a slash 32, it thinks that it's a uh, just a, a, an IP that's uh, configured in its own uh, only as a like a loopback IP, right? It's not supposed to route anything, so that's kind of an issue. Um, so that's going to be a slash twenty four. Uh, so now we see that we can uh, show that's it's da da da. Now, when we configure this is last 24, we can apply changes. Changes have been applied. Let's try again. Okay, now we're having connectivity. That's cool. So let's try to uh, what trace route. Well, we already configured that. Uh, we already made sure that this uh, reaches the. Uh, firewall. So now both into uh, now both uh, Windows machines can reach the firewall. So we are going to go ahead and uh, go back to the one ninety two one sixty eight zero two, which is the IIS server from the uh, LAN, and we are going to try to reach it again. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's exactly what we were wanting, right? So we can go ahead, go back to the DMZ in the firewall rules, DMZ. And remember that we just created this troubleshooting temporal rule. We can get rid of that. Remember that the rule only allows uh, ICMP traffic, and therefore we do not need that. The only reason why uh, we added that rule was for testing purposes. Let's just reload this in order to ensure that uh, rule didn't affect anything. Perfect. That worked like a charm. Um, so therefore we are done configuring access from the LAN to the server. Now, as you see over here, there's two different servers. There's an IIS server and there's an FTP server. Uh, in order for the purpose of this example, we are going to uh, say that the IIS server needs to save some FTP, tra uh, FTP files, or it's going to transfer some files over FTP on the uh, LAN server. Okay, remember that the, um, or just, uh, you know, in order to understand the concepts, the DMZ is at the demilitarized zone. We should place in the DMZ, in the firewalls, any single server or service that should be accessed from the internet. The beauty of the DMZ is that it's a completely separate interface in the firewall, and therefore, when we try to reach the DMZ from the internet, we are going to hit uh, the firewall and it's going to go through some rules. At the same time, if there's some traffic in the DMZ that tries to access the LAN, it's going to go through another set of rules. 
So the beauty of the DMZ is that it's going to allow us to check uh, two times the traffic that goes uh, from and to that server in case it has to access the LAN, which will make it much more secure. Okay, so let's jump over the uh, server that's in the LAN. And there's two things that we have to check. First, this, the IIS server should be able to be accessed from everywhere. Okay, so if we go to the LAN, one we have only allowed ICMP traffic huh interesting okay the DMZ we allow traffic to allow any to connect to the IS server okay so let's try to see what happens if we open the Linux machine And we try to access the IIS server. Let's give it a second. It's not the fastest virtual machine in the world. Okay, cool. Let's go for it. 6802. Supposed to connect to zero two. I believe it's loading. Hmm. Server not found. Okay, perfect. So what it means is that we have not set any rule in the one that allows traffic to the IS server. So we're going to create a new LAN and a rule in the one that will allow. So that's a pass action from the one protocol TCP as it's HTTP. HTTP is a web server, works over port 80, TCP uh, in a pro um, transmission protocol, TCP. And then source any, we don't care as long as it comes with one. And destination, that's going to be single host or alias. It's going to be 192, 168, Remember the single host, so we don't have to put a net mask, it's a slash 32. And then port range two. And then in the two, we're going to select HTTP port 80. And again, we can lock any traffic that comes from the one uh, to the server just for the sake of you know making sure that only legit traffics uh, come through the firewall. And uh, description. Cool. Okay, this rule should be created. So we apply the rule and let's try again. So let's go back to 192, 168, or let's say HTTP 192, 168, Let's give it a second.
it doesn't seem to connect let's go ahead and we saw right there was an issue in the configuration in the DMZ so let's make sure that it's not the same issue replicating in the one okay that seems to be correct perfect let me just take a while We activated the uh, monitoring. We should be able to go to system. Services. Okay. Interesting. Wait a minute. It's logging there. It's just loading. I believe it's just loading really, really slow. <laughs> Apologies for that. It seems that the virtual machine is not properly sized. We can see that it already loaded some IIS text and the proper tag. It might take just forever so but we, we see that it connects right cool so under sign that it connects to the IIS server let's go ahead and then we are going to generate the last rule for this video the last rule that we need is to make sure that the IIS can upload whatever files it has to upload to the FTP server in order to do that we are going to generate a couple of rules in the pfSense device when this is going to be a little bit different, why? Because we have not configured in this portion of the network, meaning that any of these internal IP addresses of the 192.168.1x are going to be translated when they go out to the internet to another IP. So how do I know which is going to be the IP that's going to be translated to? Well, usually it's going to be translated, it depends on which interface you're going to exit, it's going to be translated to one or another IP. Uh, in any case, it's going to be the uh, IP that will be assigned to that uh, exit port for this firewall. So all the addresses are going to be netted. So this requires some extra steps of configuration, actually only one. So let's go ahead and we go inside our uh, internal server, that's the FTP server, the one that uh, has access to the uh, firewall. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to firewall NAT. We're going to add a rule in this, uh, let me go back again. We go to firewall NAT, and now we see that we are in the port forward section, okay? What port forwarding does is it actually generates a rule forwarding the whatever traffic gets to one port to a destination within the NATED uh, interface. Okay. In this case, the destination is going to be this same server where we are connected at, this FTP server. So let's go ahead. And the first thing we might want to do, if you don't remember, it's check the IP. We can check IP config and effectively we see that this IP before is 192.168.100. So let's add a uh, uh, port forwarding rule from which interface in this case we don't want the one to, to talk to the server, we want the DMZ server. So this rule is going to uh, not connections coming from the DMZ. Okay, interface. So that's going to be IPv4. Uh, we are going, we want to filter FTP. So we are going to uh, leave TCP as a protocol. Destination, that's going to be a LAN address. And um, 
sorry. It's going to be single host or alias. And then it's going to be 192, 168. Dot 168 dot 1 dot 100. This is the IP that we just checked over here. Now destination for range, we know it's going to be port 21 FTP. So we are going to filter from port 21 FTP and then we are going to translate it to port 21 FTP. We can actually uh, configure that you will have to connect to port 80 and then that in the back end is going to translate to port 21. In order to keep things simple, we're going to open the same port. Okay. Okay, that is, that is the internal uh, address, and that's going to be 192.168.1.100. Okay, so let me check one thing up here. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. This, we will leave this destination in any. This is which destination, so which uh, IP is uh, the packet has to go requested for. As we already said that this uh, rule is going to apply to the DMZ interface. We don't need to specify uh, destination IP. So in this case, we are just going to type any. Um, and now the redirect target IP is the one that has to be, which is internal IP, the, the internal IP of the server that we want to reach. That redirect target port with a need by default. And now here, description, uh, forward port 21 to FTP server. Important to have the description so we know which roles and what we're creating. Now, reflection, use the full system that will work. Role filter association, that's no need. Whoop. It says here, following redirect target port is not valid, must be port alias or integer. Okay. So we go down. Redirect target port, and again it's FTP. So that will be saved by default. It seems that it's not. We apply changes, important. If you do the change but you don't apply it, uh, it doesn't want to work. So the last step now we have allowed, we say that everything that goes from the DMZ port 21 is going to be redirected to the 192.168.100 uh, port 21. What we need to do now is we are going to go to rules, we go to the DMZ rules, we are going to add a rule, it doesn't matter in the top or in the bottom, you remember that the rules are going to be processed from top to bottom, so in if some case we want to process one rule with higher priority or we have a drop and we have to put a, um, an exception for the drop, we will have to put it before the drop, right, just one line above, something like that, in this case it doesn't matter, we can put it one line below, so let's do use a pass rule, We're going to select interface the DMZ, IPv4, protocol TCP because it's FTP, and then uh, source. So in source, we can select only the rules, the, only the IPs that come from the DMZ network. Okay. Destination. Destination, we're going to leave it at, as any, as uh, the destination is going to be the uh, other network, but as we cannot reach it, remember we will have to reach the public IP, which is will be the gateway or the IP uh, that's propagated by this PFSense instance. So let's open, let's leave it here as any, uh, and then we're going to filter only port 21, and we're going to add the description. As a description, it's going to be allow DMZ to connect to FTP server. We're going to save, apply changes. 
and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open the IIS server let's open here uh, PowerShell and then we're going to call this FTP service and then we are going to try to open a connection okay to open a connection you can type open and the IP or if you just type open it's going to request several information let me make this bigger for you if I can okay seems that I cannot so let me try to zoom in for you it's kind of nasty at this point but anyway let me see uh, so remember that we're going to try to access this uh, server over here that has an IP of 192.168.100 but that's not going to work because it's not it. So we're going to try to access to the uh, gateway IP that's being published or it's going to be uh, propagated to the DMZ. So what's that IP? That's going to be the gateway IP. Okay. So let's go for one minute and let's open a uh, command prompt. I cannot see things big enough so let's make it a little bit bigger for you we type up the config and here we have the gateway ip so let's try to ftp to 192.168.0 whoops 192 192 168.0.1 and there you go look at that microsoft ftp server opts otf utf command successful udf8 encoding now on and now we have to type the username in this case i prepare that to accept anonymous connections and we're in user logged in so that will conclude the original um setup your first rules of a bf sense uh firewall or this will conclude the getting introduced to a firewall series if you have any more questions just leave a comment below or send us a quick email from the contact page at hackers at help i hope you really enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next video of this blue team series have an amazing day